Okay, so first of all, I'm going to be talking about anatomy and physiology, and the first bit of advice, and it kind of runs through all of medical school really, is that you'll get a lot out of all of your sessions if you do the set prep work or even your own prep work before the actual teach. And this goes especially for anatomy and physiology. Our sessions are called Life Science Resource Centre and our teachers set us prep work to do before the class. If you don't do the prep work then you won't get very much out of the session at all, you might as well just have stayed at home really. There's also often too much information crumbed into these sessions and you'll have to review it again later anyway, so my advice to you is do the prep and even if you can do a bit more reading around what they've already told you in the preparation and also follow up on the work that you've done in your session because you won't be able to take in everything. I do try to do some of the self-directed learning work that's set. I know that what I'm asking you to do probably sounds like quite a lot of work and you're probably thinking oh my god prep and then follow up and you know reading around and everything but trust me in the long term it does help so much the most important thing is doing your preparation, even if you don't necessarily do as much follow-up work. Also, towards the end of the year for me, I also did quite a lot of reading around before we even had lectures, and again, that made it so much easier for me around exam time when we were trying to revise, but also taking new information because I was reading before the lectures had actually started, so that meant that the lectures for me were basically revision. So the next point I want to make is focus on your anatomy and physiology in your first year. Try not to get too bogged down in diseases and abnormal physiology. As it is your first year, you are expected to gain a very good grasp of the basic sciences. This includes anatomy and physiology and it also helps to learn it in a clinical context. If it has a clinical significance, then it's probably important that you know what it is, where it is and what it does. It doesn't really help to spend hours trawling through Grey's Anatomy because you'll just forget it all. You can do that if you like, but it's unlikely that you're going to remember it. It's a good idea to try to tie it to a clinical context when you're learning your anatomy and your physiology, but definitely don't neglect anatomy. It is a major criticism now that medical schools have had to put aside anatomy somewhat to make way for other types of skills like communication skills, which is also very important for doctors, but there's less time now to teach students anatomy specifically, so you really do need to put the work in to make sure that you are up to scratch for what you need to know, and you don't want to be grilled by some horrible consultant because you don't know where something is. Make sure you use and try out all of the resources that your university has to offer and find out about if there are any others that you don't already know about. I only found maybe four months before the end of my year some really, really great online resources that the university had on the library catalogue uh, that were difficult to find and weren't really well advertised. So it's really worth just having a hunt to see what's on offer. In particular, I use Ackland's Atlas of Human Anatomy and that is a huge series of videos, it's hours and hours and hours long and it's this guy, he's basically dissecting a body and talking through the body um, all of the different bits, so that, that's a really really good one that I used and very good for learning your muscles as well but the um, Ackland's Atlas of Human Anatomy came free with my university so it's an online resource that I could access from home at any time Make sure you check out YouTube for some amazing anatomy resources. This is a shout out to Anatomy Zone on YouTube that I use all the time. Absolutely love it. I don't know the guy's name, but you're great. Love you. I found that when I was using these YouTube or any kind of resources really, I found it very helpful to say the words out loud and repeat them and it's also very useful on YouTube because obviously you can rewind things back if you're not entirely sure what they're saying if you don't in understand. There's also free anatomy and, and general medicine lectures on YouTube, ones I know from Berkeley or I don't know how you say it, is it Berkeley I think, and Stanford Universities I know they have loads of free lectures on all kinds of topics on there. Many courses now follow the spiral learning philosophy of education. The idea is that you learn the topic in great detail the first time and then throughout the years of your course you come back to it several times so it's repeated and you learn it in different ways in different contexts so the first time you learn it it's a foundation and then you can build and add to the knowledge that you learn in your first year each time you come back to the topic. 
the idea is that if you don't learn everything or you don't remember all of the detail of a particular topic in your first year you don't need to worry too much because you're going to come back to it again i think my advice would be don't think oh therefore you know i'm not going to bother more learn everything as much detail as you can but just don't panic and kind of obsess over things move on if you don't remember something you'll come back to it again it's also worth bearing in mind that there are some topics that are only taught once so you need to find out which topics these are to make sure that you don't just move on and that you actually put in the time to remember them because they will the chance they could be tested in your finals exams or in other exams and you will only have learnt them once so it's important that you understand your learning. And finally make sure you talk to the people above about any tips and tricks that they can offer, any advice to help you with a particular area that you might be struggling with, advice on exam technique, that kind of thing. The year above is a great resource for helping you with getting through the first year smoothly and there will probably be some kind of a mentoring scheme at your university as there is at mine. So that's it for this part of the video. In the next video I'm going to be talking about clinical skills and then finally finishing with just the take home messages like the main pieces of advice. So please click here for part three. If you like this video please like, comment and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at Second Degree Med and also on my Facebook page which is Second Degree Medicine. Look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Bye!